Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the Supernatural 1967 Chevy Impala. It's a 125 scale kit from AMT number 1124. Now if you're a fan of the long running TV series Supernatural, you'll recognize this car as Baby. Along with Sam and Dean Winchester, Baby is a black 1967 Impala, and it's really one of the stars of the show. The trunk holds the Devil's Trap, and a collection of weapons that are modified and crafted to help the Winchesters hunt down the supernatural. Now, this is a newly tooled kit. It's released in 2020. It includes a new body with interior panels and custom wheels. And it might be the only four-door 67 Impala ever really printed, uh, produced in kit form. And the box art is from the TV series Supernatural. Now there's 105 pieces molded in black, chrome, clear, and transparent red with four soft vinyl tires. It also comes with water slide decals and instructions. It, when you're done, it's 8 and 3 quarter inches long, 3 and a half inches wide, and 2 and a half inches tall. Wait, oh, uh, just, just a second, that's uh, Newt. Uh, he's the program director and he's got a question to ask. Hey, what's your question, Newt? I've never seen this show. Where can I find it? Well, you're a little late because it's uh, in its last season on the CW Network after a 15-year run. But I'm sure you'll be able to find reruns of the show. Why didn't they put a 350 in it like the TV car? I'm pretty sure that round two just uh, used the earlier parts from uh, previous versions of the um, of the car in a two-door version. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the actual car had a 427 in it. They just described it uh, as a 350 in the television show. Here's the layout of the kit. And as you can see, there's a lot of sprues, uh, mostly because there's some new tooling added to old tooling uh, to give you the supernatural. And you'll find that uh, the parts are in pretty good shape. Uh, the molding is crisp on the body. And we'll be using mostly uh, liquid cement for construction, sometimes super glue for fragile parts, and white or clear glue for the transparent pieces. And remember to heed the uh, manufacturer safety and use guidelines when you see or hear of any of the products in the review. Here are the decals for the kit. Um, they're nicely done. Uh, the register is good. The color is good. Uh, the large one there, of course, is um, a decal that goes in the trunk. And uh, unfortunately, this, this version doesn't come with an open trunk. You would have to open that yourself to put it in and use some decal setting solution there. But uh, we'll talk about that later. Construction starts with the engine. And so remove these pieces and assemble them uh, as, uh, as normal. Uh, put the engine halves and the heads in the pan, etc. All those parts together. And then, you know, uh, clean up any attachment points and seams uh, and glue them together. It's a, it's a pretty nice fit and a nicely detailed motor. Now, after the parts are dry, uh, I painted the engine block Chevy engine orange and the transmission and aluminum. Now, the paint that I use throughout the kit is um, mostly Tamiya. Uh, acrylics, Mr. Hobby acrylics, and sometimes I'll paint, uh, use a paint retarder for brush painting with those. I also use Stenel Res uh, primer on this kit, and uh, um, the uh, Ho Mr. Hobby bottle opener and the Badger paint mixer are indispensable tools uh, to help you get through your painting task. I'll get out the, uh, the carb, the distributor, fan belt, starter, alternator, air cleaner, and exhaust manifolds and uh, clean those up and test fit the parts on the engine. Then uh, glue the parts to the engine, block painting as you go along. Uh, the carburetors are flat aluminum, uh, the belts are flat black, the pulleys in the fan are semi-gloss black, the fan clutch is aluminum, and uh, the alternator bracket is semi-gloss black. Now the alternator is aluminum and the distributor uh, is gloss black. And the starter is also gloss black with a little silver for the solenoid. The oil filter is white and the exhaust manifolds are a rust color. Now place decal number 10 on the air cleaner and then give it a final coat with some uh, clear uh, gloss or a pledge floor gloss type of finish. And now uh, find these parts uh, in the kit, the frame, the upper and lower A-arms, uh, the steering linkage, springs, sway bars and spindles. Clean up the parts and test fit them 
and with some minor modification, it appears the front tires could be poseable <laughs> uh, if you're so inclined. The front suspension is intricate, but if you follow the directions and check the alignment, the wheels should sit flat and true after you're done. Now locate the parts for the rear uh, suspension and um, I had stability problems with this um, so I suggest that you use slow setting tube type glue uh, for some of the major parts here uh, to make sure that everything is aligned properly and sits uh, symmetrically. Now uh, grab those parts, the rear axle, the cover, uh, lower control arms, swings, uh, swings, sway bars and springs, shocks and upper control arms and remove uh, any imperfections and assemble those to the frame. Now I painted these semi-gloss black and some gloss black for effect. Now when you're putting together the parts kind of float, uh, they don't really have good attachment points. Uh, so keeping the parts where you want them can be difficult uh, so you'll have to use patience here. Assemble them, uh, you know, as you can, and while they're still adjustable, make sure they're in the position you want them in when you're done so that the wheels sit flat. Now to facilitate some detailing, at this point the instructions have you glue the floor to the frame, but I decided to glue the interior parts to the floor and paint those, leaving the uh, dashboard parts separate. So gather up the interior parts, including the floor, side panels, the dash, steering wheel, uh, steering column, and the seats, and I painted the entire interior there a Tamiya buff color. After the buff color had dried, I painted the seats uh, a semi-gloss black, and I then accented the door panels with a chrome pen, and then glued the chrome accent into the back seat. I painted and assembled the dash separately. And I used the buff color and sprayed it at the same time as the interior to make sure that the colors match. I then placed the decals onto the dash and I used some Walters Solvacet uh, to get them to conform to the details and features. Then I painted uh, semi-gloss black and a chrome pen on the details and placed the clear instrument panel cover onto the dash and glued it in place with some clear cement. Finally, I glued the steering column and the wheel to the dash and then glued the dash onto the interior tub on the notches uh, for receiving that. And after reviewing some photos, maybe the, um, the back deck uh, could be black as well. Um, so a little more internet uh, investigation is prudent here. Now get the body and the hood and remove any imperfections that you see. Glue the firing wall and the steering shaft to the body and at this point the body is ready for primer and paint. Glue the interior tub to the frame looking for the glue points and gather up the radiator and the support bracket and glue those parts together and get them ready to place on the frame after the engine is installed. Things will start to come together rapidly now. So grab the radiator, the engine assembly and the frame assembly along with the drive line and exhaust. Remove any imperfections from the drive line and the exhaust system and get them ready to attach to the frame and engine. Now glue the engine and the drive line to the frame assembly simultaneously and remove any paint from the glued surfaces to make sure that they stick. Glue the radiator and the radiator support bracket to the frame and make sure that the fan shroud uh, fits over the fan. Before the radiator assembly dries, glue the upper and lower radiator hoses to the engine and the radiator giving you some ability to adjust if needed. Align the exhaust to the exhaust manifolds on the engine and then glue the front part of the exhaust system to the front uh, frame assembly. Now attach the back half of the exhaust system to the front half of the frame assembly. Now I painted the exhaust manifolds a rust color and then the exhaust from the uh, manifolds were, uh, were black. And then I faded the rust color to the black uh, shade and the mufflers and the resonators were silver with a little bit of rust on the mufflers. Now I didn't want the car to look too aged since at some point during the series the car was restored so I didn't weather the underside too much to give it kind of a newish look. Now we'll turn our attention to the tires and wheels and the tires are soft and hollow making them easy to press over assembled rim components. So clean up the chrome rims, uh, hubs and the inner rims and glue the rims together sandwiching the hub without getting uh, the glue on the hub so that the rim assembly will spin freely when attached to the axles. Now when the rims are dry, press the tires over the rims. 
Now I used some black Tamiya panel line wash to accent some of the details in the chrome rims. And there were really no issues with these assemblies. Uh, they pressed over just fine and the axle attachment was nice and tight. And it set well uh, on all fours and, uh, despite the trouble I had uh, making sure the rear suspension was aligned. I painted the body with a little bit of gloss black spray. Uh, just about any brand will do, Duplicolor or Tamiya, etc. Uh, and it's uh, fortunately it's just black so uh, give it a couple of nice light coats followed by some medium coats and let her dry and once that's done go ahead and get the uh, windows and some of the accessory items ready uh, to add some detailing to this now uh, I used I glued the brake master cylinder to the firewall and then the front windshield and the rear glass using some clear parts glue and I use a, a testers glue uh, for the rear view mirror on the front windshield um, using some of that uh, clear parts glue they have and so that I could position the mirror. And a Molotov chrome pan uh, was used to paint all the trim on the car and after all of this was dry give it a coat of that pledge floor gloss or some clear acrylic uh, and this will help protect the chrome. Now glue the chrome trim to the hood and after that's dry give it uh, an overall coat of uh, floor gloss or a clear spray. Now, as always, remove any paint or chrome plating from the glued surfaces before you attach them to make sure that they stick together. Now we can uh, work on the front and rear bumpers. So remove those from the sprue and clean up any tabs and touch them up with a chrome pen. And place the clear headlights in the front bumper using some uh, clear parts of glue. And then place the uh, front license plate and turn signals uh, decals onto the front bumper. Now accent the bumper details with some uh, black tan a panel wash. Uh, I use the Tamiya brand and paint the rubber front of the bumper guards a flat black. And after these parts have dried, give it a coat of uh, floor gloss to seal everything in. Now glue the red lenses into the rear bumper and paint the backup light lens white. Glue the uh, rear bumper guards to the rear bumper using some super glue and place the rear license plate and trim decal on the rear bumper. Now accent the details of the rear bumper with that black panel line and uh, panel wash and paint the uh, rubber front of the bumper guards there a flat black too. And give the rear bumper another coat of pledge, uh, a pledge floor gloss. Now as it will handle the body here, uh, so it's sometimes a good idea is to use some latex gloves to keep fingerprints out of the uh, gloss uh, paint. Now place the body over the frame and uh, in the instructions you have it placing the engine in after the body is on the frame. But uh, if you're careful and watch out for the alternator and bracket, you can put the body right on with the engine already installed. Now the body fit to the frame was nice. Uh, it went together well. The firewall met up with the inner floor and the inner fenders. And the radiator support and inner fender fit well with the body. Same with the rear inner fenders and the small tab on the rear of the frame touches nicely to the bottom of the body. Now once that's in place, glue the heater hose between the firewall and the engine. Some bending may be required to get that hose uh, and the ports there to line up. And use a little warm heat from a, a, you know, a blow dryer to warm those up or even hot water. Um, now glue the wheels to the axles and be sure to only get glue on the hub and the axle if you want the wheels to spin freely. Now glue the battery to the radiator support bracket and paint it flat black and detail it with some silver. For the final stages of assembly, we're going to glue the front and rear bumpers on. So paint the rubber parts on the windshield wipers rubber black and glue those to the body. And then glue the clear lenses into the spotlights with some clear part cement and let them dry. Then glue the mirrors to the side of the car and glue the spotlights to the front pillars and set the hood into place. Now the mirrors and the spotlights really don't have a positive placement like many kits. So I just used uh, photos in the box as references for where they go and make sure that they're symmetrical uh, and, and they are, you know, in the right position from the driver's uh, spot uh, as you place them onto the car. Now, as you can see, there's not many pieces left over from this kit. It's a special purpose build, except for um, that large decal. Uh, the rest of the parts were probably accessed from other versions. But 
you'll find a very good and detailed article in uh, the December uh, 2020 ver um, re review by Fine Scale Modeler. Uh, that magazine has an article in it uh, that's a great I, um, process and, and demonstration on how to cut open the trunk of this car and even detail it with that great decal and some accessories. So um, you take a look at that if you want to continue and make this an absolute uh, perfect example of baby. Well, there you have it. Here's baby in all of her splendor. And it's also a great uh, rendition of the four-door 67 Impala, which uh, was, was quite well received by the public back then. And for either of these, you can now have a replica uh, to remind yourself of either the, the great long-running TV show, uh, well, until uh, the box set comes out, or a 67 Impala that your, uh, your grandfather used to drive. Either way, it'll look great on your shelf and uh, a pretty classy looking car in that gloss black finish. So if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you liked this premium scale model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the lower right hand of any of our reviews. And you can find us on Facebook or our website right on replicas.com. Thanks.